introduce our speaker and then I'm gonna read a scripture and we're gonna have the Word of God we have a wonderful man of God who's gonna bring the word and we appreciate him so much he has been such a blessing in this season doing outreach we've been doing outreach still they've given been given out food every Saturday the township gives us the food we give it out every week I think it may be coming to the end at the end of May but that's up to the government but we're going to keep on outreaching and out ministering to the community. So if you want to get involved in outreach, be in touch with Elder Brian. We thank God for him, and he's going to bring us the word. The word of God. we got to get back to the word, saints. The Lord has been pushing me. Just read the word. Meditate on it. We get news from everywhere. We're hearing all this stuff going on. The Lord said, get into my word. Find out what's happening in the spirit realm. So you won't be so confused. Get back to the word. So I'm just going to be reading the word today, Isaiah, the 40th chapter. And I'm going to have them put it up on the screen because I want you to focus on the screen and not on me. Maybe I should. <laughs> I'm going to come over this way. No, that's not working. Well, y'all pay attention to the screen. And Brother Jimmy, we're going to start that music that I want us to do. This is called Declaring the Scripture where we're declaring the word and I want you to listen and hear what the Lord says. Isaiah 40, this is in the Living Bible. He says, comfort, yes, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and tell her that her sad days are gone, her sins are pardoned, and I have punished her in full for all her sins. Listen, I hear the voice of someone shouting, make a road for the Lord through the wilderness. Make him a straight, smooth road through the desert. Fill the valleys, level the hills, straighten out the crooked paths, and smooth off the rough spots in the road. The glory of the Lord will be seen by all mankind together. The Lord has spoken, it shall be. The voice says, shout. What shall I shout, I asked. Shout that man is like the grass that dies away and all his beauty fades like dying flowers. The grass withers, the flower fades beneath the breath of God. And so it is with fragile men. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord shall stand forever. O crier of good news, shout to Jerusalem from the mountain tops. Shout louder, don't be afraid. Tell the cities of Judah, your God is coming. Yes, the Lord your God is coming with mighty power. He will rule with awesome strength. See his reward is with him to each as he has done. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will carry the lambs in his arms and gently lead the youths with young. Who else has held the oceans in his hands and measured off the heavens with his ruler? Who else knows the weight of all the earth and weighs the mountains and the hills? Who can advise the spirit of the Lord or be his teacher or give him counsel? Has he ever needed anyone's advice? Did he need instruction as to what it is right and best? No, for all the peoples of the world are nothing in comparison with him. They are but a drop in the bucket, dust on the scales. He puts the islands as though they had no weight at all. All of Lebanon's forests do not contain sufficient fuel to consume the sacrifice large enough to honor him nor are all its animals enough to offer to our God. All the nations are as nothing to him. In his eyes, they are less than nothing, mere emptiness and froth. How can we describe God? What can we compare him? With an idol, an idol made from a mold overlaid with gold and with silver chains around its neck? The man too poor to buy expensive gods like that will find a tree 
free from rot and hire a man to carve a face on it. And that's his God, a God that cannot even move. Are you so ignorant? Are you so deaf to the words of God, the words he gave before the world began? Have you never heard or nor understood? It is God who sits upon the circle of the earth. The people below may seem to him like grasshoppers. He is the one who stretches out the heaven like a curtain and makes his tent from them. He dooms the great men of the world and brings them all to naught. They hardly get started, barely take root, and when he blows on them and their work withers and the wind carries them off like straw. With whom will ye compare me? Hmm. Who is my equal, says the Holy One? Look up into the heavens. Who created all these stars? As a shepherd leads his sheep, calling each by its pet name, and counts them to see that none are lost or strayed. So God does with stars and planets. Oh, Jacob, oh, Israel, how can you say that the Lord doesn't see your troubles and isn't being fair? Don't you yet understand? Don't you know by now that the everlasting God, the creator of the farthest parts of the earth, never grows faint or weary? No one can fathom the depths of his understanding. He gives power to the tired and the worn out. Yes, Lord. And strength to the weak. Even the youths shall be exhausted <laughs> and the young men will all give up but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings like eagles they shall run and not be weary they shall walk and not faint May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Hallelujah. You are awesome. You are awesome. You are awesome. There is none like you. Never has been, never shall be. We serve an awesome God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody bless him. Somebody bless him. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah! 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 Glory and honor, majesty and power belong to you, O oh God. Hey, glory, 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 glory. <laughs> none like you, Jesus. None like you, none like you, none like you. You are the King of kings. You are the Lord of lords. You are the Alpha and Omega. You are the beginning and the end. You are the everlasting God. Ah, yeah. And there is none like you. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you, we bless you. We bless you, we bless you, we bless you. Ah, yeah. <laughs> glory, glory, glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. Sounds like we got some people who are still waiting on God. <laughs> you want to have me preach that message again, Pastor? <laughs> A repeat. <laughs> Didn't he preach that two weeks ago? <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. And he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, we thank God for another opportunity to share his word. Um, he is just good. He is just good. I, <laughs> I don't know about you, but every once in a while I think about where I came from. <laughs> and what I've done, where I've been. Woo. He is so gracious. He is so gracious. He is so gracious. I am the last one that even deserves 
to be standing behind this desk. If y'all know some of the crazy, stupid, foolish, ungodly things I did. But his grace and his mercy. Anybody know about his grace and mercy? <laughs> Hallelujah. His grace and his mercy. His grace and his mercy. Giving honor to God. Giving honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Ah, I thank him. I thank him. I thank him. I thank him. Uh, giving honor to my wife in her absence. This is her birthday weekend, y'all. Her birthday weekend. Her birthday weekend. So she off doing her little birthday stuff. Getting them spa spas and hanging out with her girlfriends and going out to expensive restaurants. Wee oui, wee oui, wee oui, wee. Oui. All that kind of stuff. So uh, we, we give honor to her in her absence and thank God for her being a blessing in my life. Uh, giving honor to our pastors. Amen. Amen. Somebody give God a hand. Praise in the house for our pastors. Hallelujah. Who are fighting on in Jesus' name. Who are pressing on in Jesus' name. And I thank God for them. They have been such a blessing in my life. It's been a blessing in my life since I've come to this house. All of y'all been a blessing in my life. I love y'all. I just love you. I just love you. I just love you. Y'all awesome. Y'all y'all are awesome. Y'all are awesome. I just thank God for each and every one of you. Thank God for my sister being in the house, my sisters Amen. being in the house. Amen. Amen. Good to see my sister Betty, my sister Gra sister Gracie, my sister Cookie. I don't know how she got the name, but that's what we call her, Cookie. How'd you get that name? Never mind, tell me later. <laughs> Amen, amen. Good to see Sister Dinah in the house, pressing on in Jesus' name. We are keeping you and your husband, Kevin, in prayer. And we know that God is able. Amen. Can somebody say God is able? There is nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard for God. Good to see each and every one of you in the house in Jesus' mighty name. All right. Uh, turn to Philippians 2. Philippians 2. Philippians 2, in Jesus' mighty name. Father, have your way on today. May it be none of me and all of you. May you reign, O oh God. Speak to our hearts. We need to hear from you, O oh Lord. We need to hear from you. May I decrease and may you increase. May your perfect will be done. May your perfect word be spoken. May our hearts be ready to be received, Father. I thank you for giving it to me, Lord, because I know that the minister is the first partaker. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I bless you, I praise you, I honor you, and I thank you for all that you do for who you are. Thank you for being my God. And thank you for choosing me as your son. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Philippians 2. I'm going to go from the first down to the 11th verse. Not going to be before you long, but we do have a couple of things we want to share with you on today in Jesus' name. And we pray that it blesses you and encourages you. It maybe even challenges you if you need to be challenged on today. If there are therefore, uh, if there be therefore any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the spirit, if any bowels and mercies, fulfill ye my joy, that ye be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Now, I, I want to take a moment and stop right there because I want to read that in the message translation. I'm in the King James, but I want to stop and I want to give you the message translation of that because I think it also brings it home in our vernacular that we speak today. If you've gotten anything out of, at all out of following Christ, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, if you care, then do me a favor. Agree 
with each other. <laughs> Love each other. Be deep-spirited friends. Amen. All right, now I'm going to go back to the King James. Verse number five. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. Once again, I want to stop right there. I want to go ahead and jump to the message translation because, again, I want you to get what he is saying, what Paul is saying here. And this is what the message translation translate those same scriptures into in our vernacular for today. He had equal status with God, but didn't think so much of himself that he had to cling to the advantages of that status no matter what. Not at all. When the time came, he set aside his privileges and took on the status of a slave, became human. All right, hallelujah. Let's jump on back to King James and we'll close it out. Verse number eight. And being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore God hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is what? Above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should what? Of things in heaven and things in the earth and things on the earth, and every tongue should what? Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Can somebody say amen? Amen, amen, amen. amen, amen. Today, my charge to you is uh, to share a word, the price of unity. The price of unity. The price of unity. Somebody say it with me. The price of unity. Did you know that unity has to be paid for? Mm -hmm. Did you know that? Mm -hmm. So let's get the context of what's going on here, because again, as we read God's word, we know what? Context is important. We just can't pull a scripture out and start preaching on it. We got to understand the context. So what's going on here? Paul is writing a letter to the very first church he planted, the church of Philippi. Now, Paul is in prison. He's in prison in Rome. And Philippi was a colony within Rome. And so he's in prison in Rome, and the first church he ever planted, the church of Philippi, hears that he is in prison, and their hearts go out to him. Their hearts go out to him. So what do they do? They gather up an offering, they put their money together, and they're going to go bless Paul even though he's in prison. So they send their brother Ephroditus, and Ephroditus goes with the gift and he shares the gift of a blessing unto Paul. He gives it to him, and he also shares the love of the members of the church of Philippi. They're coming to encourage Paul. They want to strengthen him. He's in prison. Amen? And prison ain't easy now, and it sure enough wasn't easy back then. Amen? And so they want to encourage Paul, so they send him this gift. And Paul gets the gift. Ephroditus comes, Paul gets the gift, and he is just overwhelmed. Anybody ever got a gift you wasn't expecting? <laughs> and it just blessed you? You're like, wow, they thought of me. Wow, I mean, somebody actually thought of me. They gave me a gift. I didn't have to ask for it. They just blessed me. And so he's overwhelmed. And so what does Paul do? Paul gets to writing. <laughs> Amen. He gets to writing. He wants to thank them for their gift, but he also wants to encourage them because Paul knows that the only way that this church is going to stay together is if this church stays together. Amen. <laughs> 
So he wants to encourage them to be unified, to be one of the same mind, of the same heart, of the same love, one towards another. So Paul begins to write this letter, but you know what? He's not going to write this letter and give them his own opinion. All right. He's not going to say, well, this is what Paul says. I give you my opinion. He's not going to do that. And he's not going to look to some famous church consultant, you know, to, 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 to give, uh, you know, the 10 steps to this and that. He's not going to do any of those things. Paul is going to point to Jesus. Yeah, amen. Can somebody say amen? amen. Paul is going to point to Jesus. He says, look, if you're going to be unified, if you're going to be of one body, if you're going to make it as a body of Christ, you have to be unified. And I want to tell you the one that you should be looking at when it comes to knowing what it means to be one. Amen. What it means to be one. I don't know about you, but from what I can see, of all that's going on in life, both near and far, we need some unity. Amen. Amen. We need some unity in this day. Yeah. We're lacking unity. We're lacking oneness, especially in this Western culture in which we live, right? In this Western culture, it's all about the individual. Yeah. Well, can't nobody tell you what to do? We don't even want to wear masks. I got rights. I got, I got rights. You can't impinge upon my rights. Can you help somebody else out for a moment and make sure they don't die? Can you help somebody else out and make sure that they don't die? That's all we talking about. I know you got rights, but can you wear a mask so the person sitting next to you don't die? Can you do that for me, please? So Paul is saying, look, if you are going to make it as a church, you got to be one. You got to be one. You got to be unified. And we need some unity. We need unity on our marriages. We need unity with our children. We need unity on our jobs. And we show sure enough need unity in the church. And I'm not just talking about FACC. I'm talking about the church at body at large. We need unity. But there's a price for unity. One of the enemy's chief tools against God's people is division. 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 Now, when you go back, let's look at the book of Genesis. When you look at the book of Genesis, on the third page of the Bible, page number three, somebody say three. On the third page of the Bible, there is unity. Look at this. Genesis 2 and 25. Talking about Adam and Eve. And they were both what? Naked, the man and his wife, and were what? Not ashamed. They were in perfect unity one with another. They were one in perfect unity. They were naked and had no shame. They didn't have anything hidden. They didn't have no secret bank accounts. I'm just going to stick that over there for me. He ain't got to know about that. She ain't got to know about that. They were one. They were naked. Wasn't nothing to hide. Where am I putting it at? <laughs> but they were one. But one chapter over. <laughs> Somebody say one chapter. One chapter over, they lose it. <laughs> Genesis 3, 9 through 12. This is what it says. And the Lord God called unto Adam. Now, obviously, this is after they had already bitten and eaten of the forbidden fruit. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Mm -hmm. And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, Lord. <laughs> and I was scared. 
Mm -hmm. I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. And he, God said, who told you you was naked? Hast thou eaten of the tree whereof I command thee that thou shouldest not eat? And the man said, the woman. The woman you gave me, gave us me to be with me. She gave me in the tree and I did eat. In other words, as soon as God asked him what happened, he said, not me, her. Well, wait a minute. Just a moment ago, you was naked. When, you know, just a moment ago, you was one. Just a moment ago, it was like you and me against the world. Now, all of a sudden, it's her fault. <laughs> huh? And then she ain't do no better because the next thing she said is, well, it wasn't me. It was him. <laughs> Amen? So, all of a sudden, they went from unity to division. Just in one chapter, just in one verse, a few pages. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. What was once unified is now divided. Yeah. Paul understands that the very survival of the Philippian church requires unity. Yeah. And he points to Jesus. And he gives us this wonderful, wonderful, beautiful poetry. This is poetry at its finest that Paul has given us here. But within this poetry is also a recipe. Did y'all just realize you just read a recipe? Did you realize it? Let me read it one more time before. Let me read it one more time. Wait a minute, one, one more time. If there be any consolation in Christ, you know what, actually, let me jump down. Jump down to verse number eight. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant. Isn't that beautiful poetry? And was made in the likeness of men. And being found in the fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Hallelujah. And then he goes on to say, wherefore God hath also highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the sea, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That is dynamic, absolutely beautiful poetry. But it's also a recipe. Amen. Did you see the recipe? Uh-huh. Did you see the recipe? The recipe for unity. Amen. And this is, what he, this is what Paul points to. He points to Jesus as giving us the recipe for unity in this portion of Scripture. He says what? First thing what? First things first. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Unity begins with the mind. Amen, amen. It begins with the mind. That's where unity starts is in your mind. Not contrary to what we hear about here on TV and movies and songs. It, it don't start with the heart. It starts with the mind. That's right, that's right, that's right. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. It starts in the mind, not in the heart. The mind is first and the heart will follow. <laughs> the mind is first and then the heart will follow. If you're doing it the other way around, never let your heart lead your mind. You'll end up in a messed up, jacked up joint. Ask me how I know. <laughs> Never let your heart lead your mind. But you know what? You all, you're all on radio, all on TV. Let your heart lead you. 
Whatever your heart says, no, no, no. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus. Unity, which is what Paul is talking about here in the scripture, starts in the mind, and you got to have the mind of Christ. Amen. Why? Because your mind ain't going to do it. Amen. <laughs> your mind ain't going to do it. And your mind won't do it because your mind is selfish. Oops, I'm sorry. Am I in the wrong church? Am I in the wrong church? Am I supposed to be down there at the Ebenezer Baptist Glory to God Promised Land Fellowship United Gospel Preaching? Am I in the right church? We ain't got no selfish folks in here, do we? Ain't nobody selfish in here. Nobody's selfish. But your mind won't do it because your mind is selfish. Ask Adam. I didn't do it. She did it. It wasn't me. It was her. We go into self-protection mode. Our minds are selfish. So Paul says, no, you need your mind renewed. Get rid of your mind and take on his mind. Jesus' is mind, the mind of Christ. You need your mind renewed. Somebody say, Lord, Lord renew my mind. Renew my mind. Renew my mind because I am selfish. I'm, I'm, I'm all about me. I want to protect myself. I'm singing that great old song. Me, 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 me. <laughs> me, 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 me. That's my favorite song. It's been a top hit since the day I was born. You need a new mind, and the new mind we need is Jesus' mind. Somebody say, Jesus, give me your mind. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Give me your mind. Renew my mind. Renew my mind. Renew my mind. So how can I have my mind renewed? How can I have my mind renewed? Well, I'm glad you asked me. All right. Go down to verse number seven. Actually, 6 and 7. He goes on to say this. After Paul tells them that you need a new mind, let the mind of Christ be in you. He says this in verse 6. Who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made of himself. But made of himself. But made of himself of no reputation. In other words, if you want to have your mind renewed, you got to get over you. Amen. 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 You got to get over you. Look at your name and say neighbor. neighbor. You, you. got to get over you. That's good. That's good. I'm sorry to say this, but no, you ain't all that in a bag of chips. You ain't all that in a bag of chips. Mm -mm. You got to get over you. Jesus made no reputation of himself. Think about this, y'all. Think about this. Jesus lives in glory. He lives in glory. But because he loved you, and because he loved me, he came and stepped off of his place in glory, took off his heavenly robe, and put on this old stinky, put this on. I know we do everything we can to keep it up, right? Lotion, oils, lasers, taking pills. Give me some pills. Give me some pills. I got to keep this flesh up. Oh Exercising all day. 
running. We doing everything, but he stepped off his throne in glory. And put all this on because he loves you. And, <laughs> and because he is determined to be one with the Father. He is determined to have unity in glory. <laughs> He's determined to have unity in glory. So he says, Father, not my Ah, not my will, but your will be done. Because I want to be one with you, no matter what it costs me. He steps out of glory, y'all. Glory. You have, we have no idea what glory really looks like. And to come off of that and to come into this, which sometimes I don't even like. I look in the mirror and say, man, can you get it together? And you took off glory and put this on Jesus? Because he was determined to be one with the Father. He was determined to be unified with God, to be unified with the Father. Let me ask you this. What are you willing to give up for unity? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What are you willing to give up for unity? <laughs> what are you willing to give up for unity in your house? What are you willing to give up for unity in this house? What are you willing to give up for unity on the house of your job? Jesus stepped out of glory. Put on this flesh. Because he loves you, yes. Yes, that's true. But he also is determined to be one with the Father. And he said, not my, <laughs> but your will be done. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, what are you willing to give up for unity? See, unity ain't about you. Unity ain't about you. See, there really are uh -huh, some things in life that are bigger than you. Mm -hmm. There really are some necessities that need to be met that are more important than your wants. Mm -hmm. uh, there are uh, some things that are more significant than your rights and your privileges. I don't want to wear a mask. I'm not wearing a mask. There are some things in life that are bigger than your rights and privileges. For the sake of unity, Jesus gave up all his heavenly rights and privileges. He gave them all up. What are you willing to give up for the sake of unity? And Paul goes on and says, what did he do next? Well, for the sake of unity, for the price of unity, he took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men. The king and the creator of the universe wash the feet of those he created. The king and the creator of the universe wash the feet of those he created. 
How many people here ever had a job? You ever had a job? You ever had a job? Raise your hand a job. How many times has your boss come into you and said, today I'm going to wash your feet? I ain't never had a boss. And I had many bosses. But I ain't never had a boss come in and say, I'm going to wash your feet today. I ain't never had that. If you did, oh, God bless you. <laughs> the king and the creator of the universe got down on his knees. Ah, yeah. And said, let me show you how to wash some feet. <laughs> so you got to get in on the crevices. You know those crevices. You know you got crevices. You got crevice-eye, whatever the plural is. You know your nails. That one small one don't grow like the long big one. You know it. And you know that middle toe is a little bit longer than it should be. But he washed them. The king and the creator of the universe became a servant. So if you are going to have unity, somebody has to pay the price of servanthood. Somebody has to pay the price of servanthood. You have to become a servant because that's what Jesus did. Remember, Paul ain't pointing to nobody else but Jesus, looking unto him. He said, let this mind be in you. Jesus had the mind of a servant. So if you're going to have unity in your house, if we're going to have unity in this house, somebody's got to become a servant. Somebody has to. To become a servant. Everybody today wants to be served, but nobody wants to serve. You know, obviously, we all know we just come with, we're dealing with this pandemic and things are getting a little bit better. But no, but thanks be to God, right now, the economy is, is pretty good. It's not, it's not bad. I mean, there's some bad things going on, and we, you know, we still got some hills to climb and some roads to get. But it's, it's, it's okay. My right sister in there, it's not too bad. She's in the financial industry. It's not too bad. The stock market's doing all right. I looked at my, I looked at my 541 kid. I was like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Amen. So it's not too bad. And there are help wanted signs in the service industry all over the place. Am I right? The service industry is, is like, will you please come work for us? Restaurants, retail stores, janitorial services. I mean, everywhere. They are just like, please come and work for us. I heard a story of a lady who owns a restaurant. I think she's down in Texas. Owns a restaurant. Everybody wants to get in. I mean, it's lying. Come on. We want to get in your restaurant and we want to be served. But because she can't find enough servants, she has to close one day a week. Because she just can't find enough folks who want to. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to be served, but who wants to? Serve. When was the last time you used these words? How may I help you? When's the last time you blessed somebody you close to without them even having to ask it? Now, you know Wednesday is laundry day in your house. And for the last 10 years, you didn't seen your wife come home on Wednesday after work. She tired, but she's going to get that laundry done. When's the last time you said, you know what? I'm going to wash the laundry. I'm going to fold it up. And then when she comes in the door, all she do is say, what? what? 
I did the laundry, baby. What? <laughs> now you know your man, like his back rubbed, his shower, washed, his back, whatever. When's the last time you just, just went to the shower and just run without him asking? Don't look. Don't look. Don't look. You know that. When was the last time you served without having to ask to be served? If, if we are going to have unity in this house, if you're going to have unity in your life, you have to be willing to serve. When was the last time you walked into church and said, what can I do to help today? What can I do to help today? Y'all know, know this line. I just said it to you before, and I'm going to say it to you again. Ask not what your church can do for you, but ask what you can do for your church. But that's a price of unity. Amen? Amen? It's to become a servant. To become willing to serve. Realizing it ain't all about me, 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 me. Amen. He took on the form of a servant. And was made in the likeness of men. I'm talking about the price of unity, y'all. The price. There is a price to unity. Yeah. Lastly, what did Jesus do next for the sake of unity? The scripture goes on to tell us he humbled himself. He humbled himself. Humbleness. A lowering of one's importance. A lowering of one's importance. It doesn't mean that you don't deserve to be in the front seat. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that you haven't earned the right to be in the front seat. It don't mean that you don't look good in the front seat. It's just that you're willing to give it up for someone else. You take the front seat. You have the big slice of the pie. I'm humbling myself. I am making myself of, of, of not so important, of lesser importance. All right, I'm humbling myself for the sake of someone else. It doesn't mean you don't deserve those things, don't have the right to those things, but it's saying that humbling myself and ensuring that you're comfortable, ensuring that you're good, ensuring that you're in a good place is more important to me than me. Because I want unity in this house. I want unity in my house. I want unity on my job. So I'm willing to humble myself, make myself of less importance for the sake of unity. John the Baptist did this. You remember that? John the Baptist is this, right? He told his disciples, I must what? Decrease that he may Increase. When's the last time you saw some ministers talking about, yo, don't follow me, follow him? When's the last time you saw that on TV? Huh? When's the last time you saw that? When a televangelist said, you know what? Don't bless me, bless them. <laughs> don't go to my church, go to their church. What? <laughs> that's what Paul, that, that, that's what John did. That's what John did. He said, no, 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 no. Don't follow me, follow him. I must decrease. I know y'all been following me. I'm John, I know that. I know who I am. I know what I've worked for. I, I know that. But I must decrease that he may increase. I'm going to humble myself. 
Amen? Amen. Humble myself. So humility is required if there's going to be unity. You got to pay the price. You got to pay the price. Let me close with this. I just want to close with this on the price of unity. Mm -hmm. There's no way around the price of unity. If you're going to have unity wherever you need it, you're going to have to pay the price. You know, there are things in life that uh, no matter what's going on in the economy, what's going on in the world, the price is the price. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some things like that. You know what I mean? I mean, don't expect Rolls Royce to cost $10. Huh? Don't, don't expect certain things to go on sale. All right? Certain things in life are the price. Mm -hmm. And you know what they say, if you have to ask the price, <laughs> if you have to ask the price, some things in life is just the price. And if you want it, you're going to have to pay the price. There is no way around it. And unity is like that. Unity, you're going to have to humble yourself. Unity, you're going to have to take on the mind of Christ. Unity is going to have to be not about you. You're going to have to be willing to serve, to pay the price for unity. So you may change churches, but you're still going to have to pay the price. You may be looking for a new spouse, but you're still going to have to pay the price. You may be looking for a new job, but you're still going to have to pay because there is a price for unity, and it's not going on sale just because you're uncomfortable. Just because you don't want to serve. Just because you want it to be all about you. Yeah. Unity don't go on sale. Tell your neighbor, neighbor. Yeah, neighbor. Unity yeah. does not go on sale. Go on. You got to pay the price. You got to pay the price. You got to pay the price. And yeah, you may run from church to church. And you may even run from a relationship to relationship. But guess what? The price ain't changed. <laughs> your, your surroundings may have changed. Who you associate with may have changed. But the price will never change. Let this mind be in you. That was also in Christ Jesus, who took off his robe in glory. Put on this flesh because he loves you and because he is determined to be one with the Father. Unity ain't going on sale, y'all. So I got the question, who's willing to pay the price? This week, who are you going to serve? <laughs> this week, what are you going to give up? This week, who's going to take your seat because you offered it to them? This week, whose feet you going to wash? Ooh, that was a good one. Whose feet you going to wash? Are you going to let God's word renew your mind? Are we going to let God's word renew our mind? Are we going to stop leading with our hearts and start leading with our minds? Huh? Are we going to do any of those 
those things? Or are we going to be selfish? Hmm. No, I'm not, I'm not doing that. Do you know what they did to me? Do you know what they said to me? Do you know how they treated me? Are you going to pray for them? I know it ain't easy. I know it ain't easy. But do you want unity? If you want it, there's a price that has to be paid. And Jesus showed us the way. Let this mind. God, give me your mind. Get rid of this selfish, foolish, self-absorbed mind of mine. Get me out of me. And give me your mind. That I can come into this house and make a difference. Right there on the back of that wall. And this wasn't even planned, Pastor Jay. Right there on the back of that wall are 15,000. 15,000 bulletins that will tell the people in this area, this zip code, about the love of Jesus. 15,000. Are we going to get up on our Saturday? I know you got your Saturday breakfast. It's a tradition. I know you got your fab, fab, favorite Saturday nail shop or pool hall or whatever. But are we going to get up, get out of ourselves, and let somebody know about the love of Christ and share those bulletins? Or are they just going to continue sitting on the wall? Let this mind. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. God, give me your mind. Have you ever prayed, Lord, help me to love folks the way you love folks? Because we admit it ain't always easy loving folks. It ain't. It ain't. It ain't easy. But we have to have a renewed mind. And we have to ask God to help us humble ourselves and get over ourselves so that we can have unity in every sphere of our lives, in our marriages, with our children, in our church, in our homes, on our jobs, in every sphere of life. Amen. Is anybody willing to pay the price for unity? Is anybody willing to pay the price? Because don't get it twisted. There aren't no shortcuts. <laughs> like I said before, you may change churches, you may change jobs, you may change relationships, but there ain't no way around it. You're still going to have to pay for it if that's what you want. Price for unity is not going on sale. And God is looking for those who are willing to pay the price like his son Jesus. Jesus paid the ultimate price. He paid the price for you and he paid the price for me so that you can come into unity with the family of God. Amen? So that if you are standing outside the realm of safety, his blood has been shed for you so that you are no longer a stranger or an alien, but now you are one of his children. 
you're now part of the family. A family of people who are striving to do just what he prayed that they would do, that they would be one even as he is one. I want to know if anybody here today wants to be part of that family. They're tired of being outside the walls of safety. They're tired of living in confusion. They're tired of being in, in divided relationships. And they want a change of life. And that change of life begins with Jesus. Is there anybody who's ready to give their life to the Lord? Who is ready to say, not my will, but your will be done. Is there one? Is there one? Hmm? Amen. Maybe there's one on the internet, on YouTube, whether you're watching this today or whether you're watching this 10 years from now. Maybe you want to pray that prayer of salvation. If so, repeat after me. Father, in Jesus' name, I come to you today. I confess that I am a sinner. I confess that I'm not living a life that you would have me to live. Please come into my heart. Please invade my life. Please cleanse me and wash me. In the precious blood of Jesus, make me your own, that I'm no longer wandering to and fro. But now I'm home with the family of God. May I be one with those who you have joined me with. Thank you for choosing me as your son. Thank you for choosing me as your daughter. And thank you for being my God. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Somebody give God a hand praise in the house. Is anybody ready to pay the price for unity? Anybody tired of being in a confused, divided state? Go home today. Go home tonight, this week. Think about that. Think about that. What can I do to have a more unified household? What can I do to have a more unified relationship? What can I do to have a more unified church. Can I pay the price? Amen. Let us all stand. Let us all stand. We're being dismissed. we say yes yes to paying the price for unity <laughs> hallelujah Jesus thank you for being the perfect example Ooh. thank you for being the perfect example God I admit that I am weak and I don't have it within me to pay the price I need you Holy Spirit <coughs> renew my mind Give me your mind. 
Help me to give up what I need to give up. To let go what I need to let go. Help me to get over me. And to humble myself before your mighty throne. That you may get the glory. That you may get the honor. And that you may get the praise. Thank you so much. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Father, and amen. amen, amen. You are dismissed in Jesus' name.